This is every change in feature coming to HomeKit and the Home app as part of Apple's iOS 13. How's it hanging everyone? It is Andrew here from Apple Insider and we have iOS 13 installed on our iPhone XS and there are a ton of new features this time around. So we're gonna walk through all the changes, both big and small. Once you launch up iOS 13 and the home app, Apple walks you through a few of the basics, such as improved accessory controls, cloud recording for videos, support for multiple voices on HomePod, individual profiles on Apple TV, and of course, router support. So we're gonna start off with the small changes, the settings, everything like that, and then get into the big ones. First up, in the actual settings of your home, you'll notice the page has been redesigned. Once we choose our home, this page has been moved around a little bit and reorganized. Specifically, the HomePod and HomeHubs have been relocated towards the bottom. In the notification category, we have a new addition, Cameras is now available, which makes a few different changes happen. So first up, if we look into sensors, normally we'd see the motion sensors from our Logitech and our D-Link cameras, uh, but those are nowhere to be found. It's because the actual motion sensors on the cameras have been removed and they've just been grouped into that camera category. You can see both of our Logi Circle cameras and our D-Link camera are here. You can opt to allow snapshots on those notifications or not, as well as turn notifications for them on or off whenever they detect motion. When we go into any of the sensors that can give us notifications, so a leak sensor, a CO detector, anything like that, motion sensor, we can now choose these. This was all here before, but it's been relayed out and it's a little bit more simplified, a little bit easier to understand and not as intimidating. You don't see all these options until you actually go in to change the time for any of those settings. Looking at the bottom, we have that new hubs and bridges category. So before this would just be your home hubs, your Apple TVs and your home pods that were listed. And those are still here at the top. But we also have bridges listed now too. So our Wemo bridge, our Hue bridge, our Logitech bridge, all of those are now listed there. Next up is HomePod. Not only do we have support for multiple voices on HomePod and handoff coming to HomePod, but in the Home app, we have a new UI. It's kind of messed up at the moment because we are just in a beta, but this will be fully colorized. When it actually launches, we can see what is playing there. This has also been reworked a little bit. Alarms has been relocated here into the settings portion of the actual accessory. And if we go towards the bottom, you'll see the Wi-Fi address has been removed that used to be prevalent here inside of settings. Lots of accessories have been reworked with the new iOS 13 makeover. For instance, lights and really all accessories actually have a new icon in the left-hand corner, the name and then their status right below it. So definitely a different layout than it was in the past. If we find a light that actually supports multiple colors, maybe one of my hue lamps here, this LED light, no, that does not have anything. If we go to one that supports multiple colors, such as this hue color lamp, you can see we now have access to the colors as well as the toggle, which is currently grayed out. So you can toggle a light on and off, dim that light and choose the color from one quick screen. If you have a surge protector or power strip, such as the one like KuGeek or the one upcoming from Eve Systems, you can see it has now been combined into one accessory inside of the home app. You have all three of those inputs there. So one device name for the device as a whole with three different outlets that you can also name individually inside of it. So it's easier but confusing if you were used to it before. So I could rename this like my Koo Geek power strip and then inside of that I have three actual outlets. So one for Christmas lights and two for other accessories that are currently not named. The home app will also suggest scenes that this may be good to include in such as good night or when I'm leaving. It sees that it's a light and it may be good to turn off when going to bed or leaving the house. Aside from those, we also saw a little bit of a makeover for the TVs and it has a similar kind of way that they did it with the other accessories of simplifying things, putting more things on one screen and grouping things together. So as far as how TVs goes, it used to be the actual TV turning on and off first and then a separate page for the inputs. Now everything's grayed out because the TV is unavailable, but we have the power button on top. And then this is a list here of the inputs. So you can really easily switch inputs and power the TV on and off from one screen and not having to go between two different screens. One of the best looking makeovers that we've seen here in iOS 13 is for thermostats. So one of our favorite ones, the we just reviewed it, the new Ecobee Smart Thermostat. It's the successor to the Ecobee 4. It shows up here in the home app, but you don't see three different accessories for the motion and occupancy sensors as well as a thermostat. You have one page, it is nice and colorful. You can adjust the temperature along the top, change the mode, cool heating or auto. And then we have motion and occupancy sensors there towards the bottom. It is colorful and well laid out. We really like the new thermostat update to iOS 13. As you saw, we grouped together the thermostat as well as the two sensors. So multi-sensors like the Eve Room 2 have the same condition applied. We see all three of the different monitoring things inside of one accessory. 
You can also see we got new icons. We have a new one for humidity and a new one for air quality. Speaking of new icons, we also have a new one for contact sensors. These could be on doors and on windows, and before it looked very much like a door. Now, no matter where you have it, the icon will make sense. Just looks like a simple contact sensor. A lot of new icons are coming as part of this update, and you may see them throughout this app for different accessories. A lot of the sensors were very simple before, and now they have more descriptive icons to go along with, such as leak sensor here, which actually looks like a leak being sensed. So a lot of really great updates as far as iconography goes that should have been done a long time ago. Looking at light sensors here, we have a new icon for the light sensor and a new one for motion sensing. And one last one, you'll see we have uh, smoke and CO both were updated too with new iconography. Now, if you were like me, you would often put your hubs into like the default rooms. So they were out of the way. Now in the new reorganization, hubs don't appear at all. Hubs or bridges, they don't appear at all in the home app. Well, Apple TV and HomePod do, but other third party bridges do not appear in here, which is much better. It doesn't kind of clutter up the space. The new automation tab has been completely revamped and it looks a whole lot nicer and is more descriptive as far as what's going on for your actual schedule and your automation and the rules that you've already created. Now, if we go into create one of these, it can be really any rule. There's a big, big change that I am thrilled about and I'm sure you will be excited as well. If we go down to the accessories that we can include, there are two notable changes that you could not do before and that is include things like the HomePod and the Apple TV in an actual automation rule or a scene for that matter and you can control a lot of things with that so your morning scene could automatically come on turn on the lights unlock the doors whatever you want to do but it could also play your morning playlist whatever it is that you kind of want to set up to automate with those you can do with either the home pod or the apple tv third-party speakers that support airplay 2 not included but home pod and apple tv certainly when you do include those in there, you can choose the audio that's going to be happening. You can see it'll just continue to play music and you can pick a playlist or a song, whatever to go with. You can choose it to pause music when you trigger the scene. It can resume audio to whatever it was playing last, or you can just not impact the audio at all. Maybe just change the volume up or down. To go along with this, Shortcuts has a ton of new functionality that involve HomeKit and especially Apple TV, so you can really get in there and play content and do a ton with Shortcuts and Home Automation. It's really exciting and a lot of stuff to explore. HomeKit cameras, another huge addition here with iOS 13. First is a revamped user interface. When we tap on the screen to bring up the controls, you can see it looks a little bit different. We can access all the accessories in the room down that bottom right hand corner. You can switch between cameras here at the top. And of course we have other familiar controls such as turning on the microphone, muting the audio, or getting into settings. What is really huge for cameras this time around is that iCloud will now store recordings from your HomeKit cameras. Now you don't have to rely on third party servers, third party storage plans, anything like that. It'll simply get saved to your iCloud storage. Apple will store 10 days of footage inside of your iCloud storage library, and it will not count towards your iCloud storage plan. If you have the 200 gig plan, you get access to one camera and 10 days of storage. And if you have the two terabyte plan, which is $9.99 a month, you have access to five cameras with 10 days of storage. The last feature here, and probably one of the biggest and most security and privacy focused, is the inclusion of routers inside of HomeKit. So now that router will be able to monitor your smart home devices and limit what they can access. So you could have them just be automatic where they talk to other devices in your home, in your home hub, and do outside approved services, or you could restrict it to only happening in your home, or you could have no restrictions at all and they can talk within your home and outside your home as often as they'd like. It's definitely gonna be nice to make sure that you know things are not gonna be escaping and hitting third-party services, really focusing on how secure and private HomeKit is. So that pretty much sums up iOS 13 and HomeKit. Let me know on Twitter what you think at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.